this video I'll be working through the level 3 2018 waves exam question 2 question 2 bull roar is carved piece of wood attached to string it can be swung around the head to create sounds that travel long distances and fluctuate in pitch the, the user can control the changes in pitch by swinging the bull roar around in a circle at different speeds the bull roar emits a note uh, emits a note at 200 hertz um, right 200 above the air um, as Joseph swings in a circle with a period of one second, so F equals one over T, which equals one uh, hertz, and the speed is uh, six point two eight meters per second. And assuming he's going at a constant speed, right? Describe any changes um, in p in sound that will be heard by a distance adver a distant observer as a bull roar moves around the circle. So I'll pause the video, um, write the answer, and then discuss. Right, so I've said the observer will hear, hear an increase in pitch as the bull roar moves towards him and a decrease in pitch as it moves away. Um, on the yeah, By and large, most people got that question right. If you had not studied waves at all, a lot of people would just use, like, I don't know, common sense, but they talked about volume and stuff like that. There. There's no way you'd be able to know whether it's going to be louder or quieter. Um, and, like, volume is really hard to measure because it's exponential. Like, you have a logarithmic hearing scale in your brain, ears, I don't know, whatever. Um, it's Doppler effect. Come on, you're going to have to be talking about pitch. The whole question is going to be about frequency. Um, so if you didn't talk, I, I put pitch, pitch frequency, they're synonyms for the same thing. Um, anywho. Right, that's A. B, 1 and 2, C, then D. This will be the excellence question, because it's going to be the last one. This is obviously going to be merit, because it's C. It's always just merit. This is more space than that one there. So this is going to be merit, and this is going to be achieved, and this is going to be achieved. You can't have more than two merits in a question, typically, and you only ever have one excellence. So because this is achieved, it's going to be simple. So initially, so I'll read the question. When the ball roar is at position, uh, is shown at, is at the position shown in figure A, so when the ball roar is there, calculate the wavelength of the sound that, uh, of the sound waves that Joseph will hear. Joseph's in the middle. He's just going to hear the, f the same frequency the whole time, um, which is just going to be... Uh, oh, we're trying, to, we're trying to find the wavelength. We're trying to find the wavelength. So he's just going to hear... His frequency is going to be 200 hertz. Um, the wave V equals F lambda... Um, in other words, the wavelength is equal to V over F, which is equal to 344. You've got to use the, the numbers they give you. If you try and use 343 because you've memorized it, um, tough luck. Which is kind of annoying because I think the universal one is actually 343. 200 equals, uh, what is it, 1.72 meters. I got that wrong when I originally did this. I assumed it was the observer. And I did like a Doppler shifted calculation to find the wavelength. And it was actually way simpler than I thought. Doesn't matter because this doesn't really count. Um, whatever. Right. Explain why the sound waves observed by the distance observer will not have the same wavelength that Joseph experiences. So I'll just write that out. So I said, as a bull roar, move, bull roar moves towards the observer, it gains on each emitted wave front. This causes an observed shortening of the wavelength as a bull roar moves away from the observer. Again, it gets further away from each emitted wavefront, causing an observed increase in wavelength. So you had to talk about the wavelength. It's in the question. If you didn't talk about the wavelength um, that the distant observer experiences, yeah, you just you had a bad time. This is where it pays to have a highlighter when you do these exams. Um, and highlight the keywords. So this here, would, this here did screw up so many people. Like seventy percent of students didn't get this question. Um, a lot of kids talked about frequency when they answered this question, but it's asking about wavelength. So if you can't answer the question that we are, you know, that is asked, um, you don't get the point. This answers both sides of the coin. If you just asked, if you just did the first half, really you look at the picture. The bull roar is moving away. So 
initially the observer is going to hear a lengthening of the wavelength. Um, well, he's going to observe a lengthening of the wavelength, and you need to say how it happens. You need to say it gains on each emitted wavefront, or it uh, moves away from uh, each emitted wavefront, causing an observed increase in wavelength. So, key things you have to have. Um, clearly mark on the diagram figure A, two positions of the ball at which the distant observer will measure the same frequency as Joseph. Explain why the frequency at these points is the same as what Joseph would measure. Um, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, here and here. That was an easy achieved. You got achieved, you got that. You got mirrored if you could explain it. Here and here, the ball roar isn't moving away or towards the distance observer. Um, so I'll write the answer. Right, so I said the frequency at these points is the same because the relative velocity between Joseph and the ball roar is zero at these points. I've kind of double stated it, but I mean, you, you got to really drill it home to the, ex to the examiner. We're literally, you're looking for between Joseph and the ball roar, oh, well, between Joseph, oops, cross that out, that's the observer, observer, man, I could have stuffed that one up, between the observer and the bull roar is zero at these points, because the relative velocity for Joseph is always zero, um, so yeah, cross that out, observer, sweet. Right, calculate the maximum minimum frequencies that the distant observer will hear or measure during one revolution of the ball roar. Um, use these to draw uh, a graph on the variation of frequency against time starting from position shown in figure A on page 4. So, what are we going to do? We are going to use a formula, which is in your formula sheet. In fact, I'll show you where it is. Where is it? Bada bing, bada boom. Where is waves? There it is. Doppler formula. So I'll write it in. Um, if, what is it? If dash or if? Yeah, it is. If dash is equal to if velocity of the wave divided by velocity of the wave plus or minus velocity of the source. Um, and I'll do the minimum frequency. So the minimum frequency is going to occur when we have. Uh, it is going to be what's the frequency? 200 times 344 divided by uh, 344 plus 6.28 is it 6.28? I'm pretty sure it's 6.28 it is 6.28 um, it is going to be equal to so I when you try and learn like whether to plus or minus um don't even bother learning it. You can just, like, so you know, obviously, the minimum frequency is going to be less than 200. So your denominator, that's the one on the bottom, has to be bigger than your numerator. So if you're looking for a frequency less than the, like, if you're looking for an observed frequency that's going to be less than your actual frequency, you're going to be plus. And that's going to give you, what is it, 196.41 hertz. Um, and that's how you figure out whether, like, to use plus or minus if it's going away or going towards. You obviously, you've heard an ambulance coming towards you, the frequency goes up. So if it's coming towards you, it needs to be minus. If it's going away, it needs to be plus because the frequency drops. And everyone that lives in the real world has heard like cars and stuff come towards you. You hear the frequency increase um, as it comes. Well, it stays the same. It's an increased frequency if it's coming towards you at linear velocity. Anyway, max. Um, Ah, chuck it down there. Max is going to be equal to 200 times 344 divided by 344 minus 6.28. And that is going to give me, what is that, 203? 3.71 hertz. But a boom, got to mirror it. If I want to get excellence, I need to turn the page and figure out what the heck the picture is telling me. Over here, the bull roar is moving away. If it's moving away, it's going to be... And it's going to be moving away at the most here. So we're going to start at the lowest frequency. The lowest frequency is 196. So I've got 200. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2. Okay, easy peasy. I need to go four and almost full down. So 1, 
two, three, four, is it four hundred? There we go. Um, one whole cycle is one second. So half a cycle is going to be here. Um, quarter of a cycle is going to be here. And the other quarter of the cycle is going to be 75 here. Right, I'm going to break it into quarters. Half a second later, the ball roar is going to be on the other side of the circle. Because it takes a whole second to get all the way around, so half a second will be on this side. And it'll be at the maximum frequency. Don't draw on the picture because you'll ruin your marks for those two. But here, um, the ball roar is coming towards, so it'll be at the maximum frequency, which is going to be 206, uh, 203. And that occurs at time five, well, half a second, so 203.7. So 1, 2, 3.7. And there we go. Here and here, that's quarter of a second, that's three quarters of a second. Quarter of a second, it's going to be zero. Three quarters of a second, it's going to be zero. So here, um, I'll put a mark here and across here, it's going to be zero. It's going to finish where it started because it's just a circle. Right. Here's a trick. Anything that goes around in a circle will translate out a sine graph. It's just how it works. So this is going to be a sine graph. Well, really, it's going to be a, what's it? That'll be a cos graph. It's going to be a negative cos graph. So try and, I'll turn my page on the side and I'll try and be neat about it. Get up to here. And I'm going to go down. I'm going to make this kind of neater. There we go. Look at that. A few pointers. A lot of kids did straight lines. So they went from here straight through to here, straight through to here. That's not the case. Because it's going in a circle, the, the frequency gradually increases and gradually decreases. Because that would mean that at this point here, all of a sudden you get a boom and it snaps frequency, but it doesn't. It's all gradual. So this got you the E.